The income and net worth of American families has been on the rise, and the upward trend includes African Americans, according to the Federal Reserve. The Fed survey of 6,200 families found that between 2013 and 2016, the median income of black families increased by 10%, while median incomes of Hispanic families rose 15% and white families by 6%. The lower growth number among whites is in partly due to their higher earnings in general. But the Federal Reserve's numbers paint a different picture from another new report by the organization Prosperity Now and the Institute for Policy Studies. According to that report, the median wealth of African Americans will fall to zero by the year 2050. Joining us right now is Bill Spriggs, professor of the Department of Economics at Howard University, an economist with AFL-CIO. Bill, when you see these two reports, so explain for our audience when they, they hear these things, we deal first with the Fed report. So folks go, oh my goodness, numbers going up. First of all, Obama said this about 18 months ago uh, as well, so it's not like this is actually new data. Well, on the income side, it's not new data. It reconfirms what we've been seeing from the census that does this on an annual basis. What is new is the information on wealth. And yes, black wealth between 2013 and 2016 finally started to rebound from the greatest collapse in black wealth but since. The, mm -hmm. but since? Since, yeah, you, you got to go back to the loss of farms after World War I when we lost all of our land. And what folks have to, folks have to understand, the folks at Pew when they did their particular study, it showed that whites lost about 24, 25 percent of their wealth during uh, this major recession. Hispanics was around 40 percent, black folks 64 percent. Uh, so the drop was tremendous uh, for us because by the line is most of our wealth tied up in housing, home foreclosure crisis, white, uh, white families largely have diversified income. That's correct, and that continues to show in the data. So this is a, is a very rich database. And so, yes, it is still the case that African Americans are more likely to hold wealth in their home. The value of our homes is the lowest of any of the groups that they track, way lower than anybody else. So the, the, the median. The median wealth for blacks compared to whites continues to be at a very low level. Now, if you hadn't had a chance to see this 2016 data, then look, we were on a downward trend that would get us to zero. We will be at virtual zero in the sense that our share of wealth isn't growing. Our share of national wealth isn't growing. What we are on a path in this nation is South Africa. We are going to be a nation where the economic majority is white, but the political majority are people of color. Latino households have about the same wealth as African American households. They did a little better, they have a little bit higher home ownership rate, but essentially the two of us, Latinos and African Americans, are in the same boat when it comes to wealth and about the same boat when it comes to income. So, so in about uh, six years, the top 10% will represent over half the income. It's already the case that the top 5% represent the majority of the wealth. And that top 10%, that top 5% doesn't look like America. Which, so, which, which, is, so, why, which is why I've been making the point that we, you could talk about economic numbers, excuse me, demographic numbers changing, but if we also are not uh, as vigilant dealing with our education numbers, dealing with, uh, dealing with in terms of where we are with saving and investing, demographics will mean nothing because yes, no one group will be a majority of the country demographically, but that will be the case in terms of who holds the money, which means who has the power. Well, let's, let's be clear. This is not about savings. This has nothing to do with savings, has nothing to do with education. The wealth gap is on a different planet, like Julianne was saying. Th these are two different boats. The median wealth of a black college graduate is somewhere near the median wealth of a white high school dropout, just like the unemployment rate for a white high school dropout is like the unemployment rate of a black person with an associate's degree. The, 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 these aren't the same. And so this is not from the lack of savings. That's not the okay. cause of this. And the other important data that they finally started putting in is, how much did you get from inheritance? Exactly. And how much did Here's, you get from gifts? There it is. And there you saw this huge gap between even getting inheritance. We're not how much you got, but right. even that you got it. And again, the inheritance piece is what I, is, is is the residual effect of 
244 years of slavery, nearly 100 years of Jim Crow, the ability to be able to accrue wealth, because what we often, are, uh, Julian, are doing, we're passing on debt as opposed to passing on resources. Precisely. If we saved every penny we had, if black folks went to the most lean budget you could, Scott never bought another suit. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but if, or, or, or took a car and his thousand dollar cufflinks, which, which was the dumbest thing in the it world. It was the dumbest. dumbest. Well, you know, we, we're not going to ascribe brightness to Tucker Carlson. So, you know, if, if everybody sp saved every penny they could, we could never close the wealth gap. This is generational. It's multi-generational. It's really about not only in inheritance, we have to look at those periods of history where deliberately black people were excluded from accumulating mm -hmm. wealth. Uh, there were laws passed in the South that said you couldn't own but so much. Yep. In my own family, we had literally, the fence moved overnight rolling. We had some land and the white folks decided they wanted the Moss Point, Mississippi, they wanted that little bayou because there were fresh fish there. It belonged to Hawkins, our family. They went to bed one night, they woke up, the fence had moved. Mm -hmm. And for, after 30 years, the, the um, compromise after two cousins disappeared the compromise was that they named the little street Hawkins Lane they still kept the bayou but, but it but this and is the not, property and, and this is not my family this is the emergency land fund documented the black loss of land got it and, and it was just thousands yeah, but, millions but, of acres Roland, uh, I can see it I know enough to be dangerous on macroeconomics. It seems to me if we are consumers as African Americans at the rate of about, what is it, three billion a year, three million a year, what have you, and we don't transfer wealth through inheritance because we're spending all of those monies, won't the numbers close and rise? Because, no. hold on one second, won't the numbers get no. better for African Americans if we start investing in insurance and transferring wealth Build over again. generations? No, no, no. As Julianne was just pointing out to you, this is not about difference in savings rates. Mm -hmm. All the data we have on savings, we save at the same rate. So let's stop that. It, it is not productive for us to do that. But to do inheritance, you've got to have something but, but to Scott, inherit. Right? You've got to have. We don't overconsume. It's a but, bad rap that bad black people have about okay. consumption, and okay. it, 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 it blames the people who essentially have been, have been sidelined from economic accumulation for hundreds of years. Kenneth, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, I have a question for you in terms of this. Um, and it's the last question. I got to go to the break. Go exactly. Ahead. Was there an impact? of the moves, the three moves of blacks from rural America into urban America during the um, the 20s, the 30s, and also then the 60s in terms of the loss of land and thus the ability to transfer uh, no. inheritance. Well, one second. Well, 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 part, part of the land loss was because, uh, and it continues, because we, we, we die without wills. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so having land without clear title creates some issues. Yes, sir. But most of the land was lost in the same way of the housing collapse. Uh -huh. Black farmers had to borrow heavily in order to get that land. Uh -huh. The price of agricultural goods uh -huh. collapsed after World War I, yes. and we were saddled with a lot of debt and the inability to pay that debt on land that had depreciated because agricultural prices collapsed. So the same mechanism that caused the housing crisis was the same thing that got us with the land crisis when yes. in, at the end of World War I. So here's what we're going to do again to my staff again. They're going to book you week after next, and we're going to literally have a class and walk through uh, some of this stuff like we talked about last time. Yes. Uh, so let me know the dates. Okay. I will lock it in <laughs> so we will actually do that, and we'll have class with Doc Spriggs. Appreciate it, man. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Weekdays on TV One. I will never lie to you. Oh, my God. Roland Martin. He doesn't want to talk to us. He wants to ignore us. Uncensored. No. Hell no. no. That ain't gonna cut it, boo. Unapologetic. No, no, that, that is fundamentally false. You are wrong. Unfiltered. He wants an America where we all look alike. He ain't talking about black people. Unrelenting. You better go work out because you got to fight on your hands. News One Now with Roland Martin, weekdays at 7 a.m. on TV One.